Okay, here's a nice little integration question to get us warmed up. We're going to integrate 8x cubed plus 6x to the power of half minus 5. Integrate that with respect to x and give each term in its simplest form. So the 8 remains and we increase the power. So 8x cubed becomes x to the power of 4 over 4. The 6 stays there while the x to the half becomes x to the power of 3 over 2. Divided by 3 over 2. So again, increase the power by 1 and minus 5 becomes minus 5x. And of course, don't forget the plus c. Um, so we just have to simplify now. 8 over 4 is 2. 6 divided by 3 over 2. Well, the 2 ends up back on the top to give me 12. So I end up 12x to the power of 3 over 2 over 3, minus 5x plus c. And I just have to tidy up the 12 and the 3 to give me 2x to the power of 4, plus 4x to the power of 3 over 2, minus 5x and plus c. And there's your answer. Right, in this integration question we're given a sketch of curve c and it has the equation given there which is a quadratic already factorized and we're told that it crosses the x-axis at points a and b. And part A of the question is to write down the x-coordinates of A and B. Write down is a clue that it should be easy. So it's factorised already, so the factors tell me the points where it crosses the x-axis. So x plus 1 means it crosses at minus 1, which must be point A. And the other factor, x minus 5, means it crosses at x equals positive 5, which must be B. So these are our coordinates. Right, part B. We just want to find the area R. It's enclosed by the curve C and the x-axis. So to find the area, we need to integrate between the two points uh, A and B. So we want the integral between A and B of uh, the function y. So the limits are minus 1 and 5. We just wrote those down. And what we're integrating is x plus 1, x minus 5 with respect to x. Uh, but we can't integrate that until it's expanded. We can't deal with the product of those brackets. So let's expand that out. We have x squared. Then we've got a minus 5x and a plus x. So that gives me minus 4x. And finally, 1 times minus 5 is minus 5. That's much nicer. Integrate that. So we have x squared becoming x cubed over 3. So increase the power and divide by the new power. x becomes x squared over 2. Again, increase the power and divide by the new power. And 5 becomes 5x. And we're going to evaluate that between minus 1 and 5. So it must be square brackets at this stage. Now I'm going to just tidy that up a little bit because um, the bit in the middle I can write as 2x squared. And I just prefer that. Um, so let's give ourselves a bit more room. We need to substitute in 5 and minus 1. At this point we have uh, not square brackets anymore. We have uh, curved brackets, and we go with 5 cubed over 3, minus 2 lots of 5 squared, minus 5 lots of 5. That's my first bracket, so minus what I get when I substitute minus 1 in there. So minus 1 cubed over 3, minus 2 lots of minus 1 squared, minus 5 lots of minus 1. And we simply need to evaluate this. So 5 cubed is 125, so we have 125 over 3, minus 2 lots of 25, so that's minus 50, and then minus 5 times 5, so that's minus another 25. And then the second one I'm going to work out a little bit before I remove the brackets. So minus 1 cubed is minus 1, so that's minus a third. Minus 1 squared is 1, so that's just minus 2. And then we have plus 5 because the minus signs cancel out there. If we tidy this up a little bit more, 125 over 3, minus, uh, combine those two to give me 75, and then getting rid of the brackets, minus minus a third is plus a third, minus 2 plus 5 inside the bracket gives me plus 3, but I'm subtracting that, so I have minus 3. And now I can, if I look at this, I can combine the two fractions which have denominator 3, 125 thirds plus another 1 third gives me 126 thirds. And minus 75, take away another 3, is minus 78. And we're almost there. 126 over 3 is actually just 42. So we're left with 42 minus 78, which equals minus 36. 
Now remember it's negative because the area is below the x-axis. So we don't quote minus 36 as our answer because you can't have a negative area. So we say that the area is the positive value for that. So 36 square units. And that's it. Right, in this question we have a curve and its equation is y equals f of x. And we have two facts. It passes through the point minus 1, 0. And we're also told that f dash of x, the derivative of f of x, is that. And we want f of x. Well, okay, so y equals f of x. And that's going to be found by integrating f dash of x. Okay, f dash means the derivative of x. So we integrate that to get back to f of x. So we simply have to integrate the function that we've been given. So we're looking for the integral of 12x squared minus 8x plus 1 with respect to x. So going through term by term, x squared becomes x cubed over 3. Increase the power and divide by the new power. Um, x becomes x squared over 2, doing the same thing. And of course 1 just becomes 1x, or just x. And you mustn't forget the plus c. The plus c is hugely important here. You can't get full marks for this question without it. So if we tidy that up, 4x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus c. That's my expression for y. Now I can go up here and use this fact that we've been given, that it passes through minus 1, 0. Okay, that means that when x is minus 1, y will be 0. So I substitute those two values in together, and that will allow me to work out c. So y is 0. Substitute uh, minus 1 for x. So 4 lots of minus 1 cubed, minus 4 lots of minus 1 squared. Don't be tempted to hurry this, because there's lots of problems potentially with minus signs. So take it one step at a time. Um, working that out, 4 lots of minus 1 cubed is 4 lots of minus 1, which is minus 4. Take away 4 lots of minus 1 squared, so that's just 1, so take away 4 lots of 1. Uh, minus 1 plus c. So you can see all of those negative numbers, shift to the other side becomes po positive, so c is 9. So now I just need to state my answer. Okay, because I've worked out the uh, equation, or rather, the, I've worked out f of x, and I just need to write it out in full with c in there. So f of x is 4x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus the 9, which we just worked out. And that's all there is to it. Okay, to start off, we were given um, the equation of a straight line, y equals x plus 4, and a curve, a quadratic, y equals minus x squared plus 2x plus 24, and we've shown just how they intersect on a curve at points A and B. Now, the first part of the question wants us to find the coordinates of A and B. So to find the coordinates of any points of intersection of two curves, we have to solve simultaneously. So let's write out the equations that we've got. y equals x plus 4, call that equation 1, and y equals minus x squared plus 2x plus 24, call that equation 2. Now, because they're both in the form y equals, the simplest thing to do is to equate the two equations. So I'm going to say equation 1 equals equation 2. So on the left, we have x plus 4. On the right, we have minus x squared plus 2x plus 24. And this now is just a quadratic, and I have to rearrange it into the normal quadratic form. So I'll add x squared to move it to the left-hand side, subtract 2x and subtract 24, and this is what we get. And this is quite a nice quadratic. It should be fairly easy to factorize. I'm going to have x in both brackets. And if I look at what I've got, the minus 20, um, that tells me that my numbers need to multiply to give minus 20, but they need to add to give minus 1. And that means it must be minus 5 and 4. So these give me the two x values that I need. x equals 5 and x equals minus 4. But I want the coordinates, so that means I need the y values. So I'm going to substitute these back into either of my equations, but uh, equation 1 is clearly the simplest, so let's use that. So starting with x equals minus 4, we'll substitute that in. That gives me y equals, um, well, let's just have a think, what do we expect it to be? If we look at our diagram, this is point A when x is minus 4, and it's clearly shown as being on the x-axis. So we'd hope that y will come out to be 0, um, otherwise the diagram is very misleading. 
So let's see, if we substitute in minus four and add the four, we get zero. Well, that's a relief. So we now substitute in x equals five into equation one, and that gives me y equals five plus four, which is obviously nine. So those are my y values, and I can summarize what I found out. The point A has coordinates minus four, zero, and B has coordinates five, nine. They're the two points we asked for. Right, next, I am told that the region R is bounded by the straight line and the curve, just as shown in the diagram. So you can see the gray part of the diagram there. And we want to use calculus to find the exact area of R. So let's have a look at this diagram. Um, R is contained between points A and B. Um, but if we draw a line down here, um, we can make a little triangle. OK, we'll call that area S. Hopefully it's clear to see that if we were to find the area underneath the curve, so the whole of the quadratic between A and B, going right down to the x-axis, um, and then subtract the area of the triangle, that's going to give us the area that we want. OK, so the area of R is the area under the curve minus the area of triangle S. So the area under the curve, we find that by integrating the curve. So um, we're doing it between points A and B, or at least it's the x values of A and B. And we're integrating minus x squared plus 2x plus 24 with respect to x. For the area of the triangle, um, we're just going to use half times base times height. And we'll figure out what the base and the height are as we go along. So let's just have a look. Um, now, in the previous part, I found out the x coordinates of A and B. So minus 4 and 5, they're going to be my limits for this integral. So we're going to integrate from minus 4 up to 5. Uh, we're going to integrate minus x squared plus 2x plus 24 with respect to x. Now for the triangle, um, the base, uh, well if we look at the diagram, it's this length along here. And that's the difference between the x coordinates at b and a. So we're going to subtract them. So 5 minus minus 4. Next, the height, again, we can see that that's just that bit there on the diagram, which is the y value of point B, which we worked out just now, and it is 9. So that height is 9. So now we just have to evaluate this integral and make sure we don't make any numerical errors along the way. So if we integrate this, we get minus x cubed over 3. x becomes x squared over 2 and 24 becomes 24x. And we're going to evaluate that between limits minus 4 and 5. And for the triangle, we've got a half times 5 minus minus 4, which is 9, times the other 9. So let's work this out, carefully substituting in. Oh yeah, first let's cancel out the 2s, make that simpler. Um, but my first bracket, I'll substitute in y equals uh, x equals 5. So we have minus 5 cubed over 3 plus 5 squared, plus 24 lots of 5. And we're going to subtract what we get when we put in minus 4. So minus, careful, brackets, minus 4 cubed divided by 3, plus minus 4 squared, plus 24 lots of minus 4. And then we've still got the uh, triangle to subtract on the end, so that's half of 81, 81 over 2. Um, I'm going to do one more stage before I get rid of the brackets, just to make sure I don't make any mistakes with the minus signs. So that's minus 125 over 3, and then I've got plus 25, and I've got uh, plus 120. 24 times 5 is 120. Now here, minus 4 cubed is minus 64, but I've got another minus sign, so that makes it plus 64 over 3. And then minus 4 squared is obviously 16. And 24 times 4 is 96. So I have minus 96 there. And my triangle is still hanging on the end. Right, let's finish this off. So I'm going to have minus 125 over 3. And then the 25 and the 120 become 145. From this bracket here, I've got minus 64 over 3. And then the 16 and the minus 96, well they combine to give me minus 80, but when I subtract that it becomes plus 80. Going on to the next line, uh, let's combine these two fractions which are 
uh, thirds. So I've got minus 125 and minus 64 thirds, and 145 plus 80 is 225. Oh yes, oops, um, don't forget the minus 81 over 2 for the triangle, so I'll bring that down. Sorry about that. So minus 81 over 2, hopefully you spotted that before I did. And, um, well, that fraction becomes minus 189 over 3. I've still got 225 and still got minus 81 over 2. I'm not combining those just now because I want to see the separate values at the end. That's going to be minus 63, which means that the minus 63 and the 225 give me 162, which is the total area under the quadratic, and I'm subtracting 81 over 2, which is the area of my triangle. So what I get eventually is 243 over 2, or if you prefer decimals, 121.5 square units. Whew, that's the area they were after. Right, a classic start to um, a trapezium rule question here. We're given the equation of the curve, in this case y equals 5 over 3x squared minus 2, and we're asked to fill in the table. So let's start with when x equals 2.5. Sub that into the equation, we get 5 over 3 times 2.5 squared, and minus the 2. Oops, make room for that. Um, work this out step by step. Um, I do the denominator separately and get 16.75. And then when you divide 5 by that, we get a 0.2985 dot dot dot, but it only wants the answer to two decimal places, so that rounds to 0 0.30. Careful with the rounding there. Um, and then the same thing for x equals 2.75. So when we sub that in, we get y equals 5 divided by 3 lots of 2.75 squared minus the 2, um, which comes to 5 over. 20.6875 and that equals 0.2416 dot 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 um, but then we round it to two decimal places we get 0.24 okay so next we're asked to find using the trapezium rule an approximation for this integral so it's an integral which fits the table we've been given it's from limits um, 2 up to 3 um, so we're going to use the trapezium rule, which is half times h. h is the width of our trapezium, which you can see quite clearly from this is 0.25. So if h is 0.25, we have a half times 0.25. And then inside our big brackets, we have the first value and the last value, each added once. So 0.5 plus 0.2. And then we have two lots of well, basically everything else, all the middle values. So two lots of all of that. Think of it as two times the middles. So the middles are 0 0.38 plus 0 0.30 plus 0 0.24. And we close our brackets. Make sure you show you working step by step because there are method marks for this one. So a half times a quarter is 1 eighth. Then inside the brackets, I've got 0 0.7 plus two lots of, uh, that comes to 0 0.92. Um, and so we've got 1 eighth times 0 0.7 plus 2 times 0 0.92 is 2.54. There's a method mark for getting to that stage. And if we multiply that, we get 0 0.3175, which we might as well round to 0 0.32 because the data that we were given only had two significant figures. So 0 0.32, that's my estimate for that integral. So what are we going to do with that? Well, we're given this uh, sketch of a curve with this equation, which is the equation we've just been dealing with, and it's for the region we've been talking about from 2 to 3. So our approximation for the integral gives me the area under that curve between A and B. Now, it wants me to use my answer from part B, so use that to find an approximate value for the area of S. So looking at that diagram, uh, area S would be equal to the area under the curve, uh, all the way down to the x-axis, um, which we just worked out. And then we'd have to subtract this little triangle here. Okay, so subtract the area of that triangle. Well, the area of the curve we can approximate as 0.32. That's what we've just worked out using the trapezium rule. Um, and then for the triangle, well, it's just half times base times the height. So the base, that's quite easy. 3, three minus 2 is 1. 
so a half times one for the base. Um, the height, well, that's this bit here. It's just the, the y coordinate of point B. So we might have to work that out, but if we're sensible, we realize that the table that we've got, uh, which is off the top of my screen at the moment, but that gives me the value uh, of the y value at B. B is point, the point 0.3 and 0.2. So 0.2 is the height of my triangle. So I just have to do 0.32 minus uh, a half of 1 times 0.2, which is 0.1. So we get 0.22 for our area. Um, and that's two decimal places. That's it.